What's good, family? Hey, man, it's like the posters on my wall um, from, from the magazines I had in the past, from the Black Beat magazines, the Right On magazines, the, the Vibes, the Source, the, my, the, the magazines, they're coming to life. All right. The magazines are coming to life, man. Some of the guys, uh, I could recite your lyrics uh, from the most obscure music that you have. You know what I mean? No doubt, no doubt. Very, very, this, this is this is paramount, man. My resume is getting very, very extensive, and shit, I appreciate having you here. I'm hearing a lot of good things about you. A lot of my peoples is telling me, yo, you got to get on that forum. You got to get on that platform. Sun Show is official. Back with him. So I'm like, yo, I'm looking at it. And then, you know, obviously, as of the other couple, few days ago, about, about a week or so ago, I started really paying attention to what you was doing. And I was like, yo, I like what he's doing, you know? I appreciate you. Why, for those who don't know you, why don't you get him a rundown on who you are, man? From the, uh, you got two identities, man. You got several identities, man. You was, you was the intelligent hoodlum. And um, then you was Gaddafi and you was, come on, my nigga, give him, give him the, the rundown and shit. You got a legendary rap sheet. All right, well, my name is Tragedy. Um, I came under many different cloaks. I came under the Intelligent Hoodlum Cloak. Uh, did quite a few projects from Bali Mall. I was a member of the Juice Crew. Then I went on and um, became... By default, trage uh, became Intelligent Hoodlum. I didn't necessarily... That wasn't necessarily a name, but it was more so like the title of my album. And then everybody just ran with it and started calling me Intelligent Hoodlum. And I kind of just... I kind of ate that one. No freaky. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I gotta ask you this before we go any further. I, um, Talk to me. <clears throat> I seen an interview somewhere, and it said that that you was you was locked up with Black Rob before he was like Black Rob. He was like Robbie O or some shit like that. Yeah, it was Robbie O. Um, I was I was locked up with Black Rob. Hold on, let me get in the car while I bear with you. I was locked up with Black Rob on my first bed. My first bed, I caught a um little bullshit one to three. I caught a little bullshit one and three, and um, I had got sent to Elmira, and at that particular time, El now it's downstate, but Elmira used to be the reception. One side was reception, and the other side was population, and um, I got locked up, obviously, and um, I was in the yard, and you know, I was spitting, and uh, Black Wall came through, and he was spitting, so dudes, you know how, you know how it be, just like the same way on the block. You know, dudes try to pit me and him against each other, right. and we was kind of like going back and forth. It wasn't an official battle, right? But it was definitely, you know, we were sparring. You know what I mean? All right. So in that jail at that time, who was the premier MCs? Because I try to explain to people who watch my platform that there's a a whole nother level of talent incarceration incarcerated. You dig? So if, yeah. If you yeah. Can, if you can recall any any super gifted MCs or anybody who stood out that was there at the time with you. Elaborate, please. Uh, at that particular time, I really just remember him and I. I mean, later on through, throughout life, I mean, you know, I caught a bit later, much later in my career, unfortunately, um, and went to Sing Sing. And I was in Sing Sing with um, my son was in there, Chi Ali, and a brother named China Mac. And now China Mac is out here doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? But um, and I was also locked. I was also at that same time incarcerated. Rest in peace with um, Malik El Haj Shabazz, Malcolm X's, uh, Malcolm X's grandson. I was in Sing Sing with him. I met him. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting homeboy before that situation yeah. happened. I guess it was. Um, I don't know, man. I'm anointed with some shit, man. I didn't. I didn't encounter some very, 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 very special people. But yeah, I got a chance to meet him before all of that happened. Yeah, yeah. He was a good brother, man. Um, I think he was just beginning to kind of find his way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Find his way and sort of like find his lane. Because to grow up under the shadow of El Haj, Malik El Haj Shabazz, is, you know, that's a tough one to, 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 to come from under. Because people have a lot of expectations of you. And I think pro like right before his demise or his untimely death, which was, you know, whatever. He was, he was murdered, man. He's assassinated. He's assassinated. But right before his assassination, you know, I believe he was finding his lane. You know, he was finding his, his, his way. No doubt. 
I see you burning it down. I see what you smoking on, man. <laughs> sour diesel. It's always a diesel, my nigga. Sour. Always, a, always a sour. Yeah, I can't be nowhere laying down, and I can't be dozing off and I'm like that. I gotta stay. I gotta stay in motion. I feel you. I feel you. Um, keep it moving. Uh, keep it moving, uh, man. I, I got a. Uh, I, got, I got a chance to look look over your documentary again today, and um, it was a part on there, and you was like, you know, you know, you was you was basically kind of like raising yourself at a period of time. Yeah, you said that you used to go to Associated. When I visited Queens Bridge, I had to walk through. I had to go through there because of you. I had to see that. Had to see that. Oh, that's official. I went in there and bought something. So this tragedy was staged. Mistake. Yeah, basically, it wasn't steak. It was nigga. It was straight steaks. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> I was I was taking look. I was taking straight steaks, and I was feeding this nigga right here. <laughs> look how big he is. I was no freaky. I was feeding that nigga right there. You hear me? Nah, real spit though. You went. You didn't know nothing about no season and nothing. You were just throwing that shit in the skillet, burning it, burning up meat and shit. Yo, listen, man. Salt, pepper. Nah, man. he could do it. Yeah, I tell him. He could throw down that Chef Mocky. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't be playing no games, man. I don't play no games in that kitchen. No, but at that particular time, man, I was young and you know, I was just trying to trying to trying to trying to take care of my family, man. My mom's was in a situation. My pops, our father, he was in Clinton locked up doing about seven joints and I had to hold the family down, man. That's what men do. I was a boy, but you know, that's why, for another reason why I don't like motherfuckers calling me boy. You know how niggas pull up on you and be like, yo, what's up, boy, boy? I checks everybody on that shit. Everybody. I be, I be like, yo, don't call me boy, because I never had a chance to be a boy. I got robbed of that a long time ago. So don't call me boy. It's offensive to me. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't give a fuck if a check if a check writer call me boy. I better listen. Don't call me. Pass that fucking check, but don't call me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so y'all got so many rappers, man. Um, it was a time when Queensbridge kind of like dominated. It. There was a pocket when it was just so many many of y'all, and y'all was just coming out of nowhere, out of nature. Yeah, Randy especially and screwball, and every week it was somebody, then it was the, the rare guys, the rare really guys you would discover, like Killer Sin and all of them. What was going on in the projects yeah. to respond to all these goddamn MCs, man? I think, I think, I mean, I think, of, of course, the area have a lot to do with it, and it's the times, man, like, anytime you have, you know what I'm saying, poverty and hard conditions, you're going to create, people are going to create the best of art, and the best and the worst, the best and the worst is going to come out of motherfuckers. Right. And I right. think that's a time when the best came out. Like, if you look at the times now, we're in the swipe era, you know what I'm saying, and you know, a, a kid, these kids nowadays, they could go from being broke to you know pushing a fucking Maserati off the swipe game. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So there's no gauge for struggle, and therefore there's no time to process art and process that beauty in it, in that sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm not taking nothing from them. Yo, eat. And I'm not saying you should go out there and do that. Right. I'm just saying you right. should. I'm just saying you shouldn't fucking starve. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, uh, I, I, something just uh, reoccur I, something just came back to mind, man. It's gonna fuck you up. You know I be talking about basketball and shit, right? Oh shit! When yeah. I was in Queensbridge, my, 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 my mother knew more about basketball than me. But go ahead. When I was in Queensbridge, I I, yeah. I was fucking with Mike Delorean, and guess who walks up dribbling a basketball? Who, Ron Ron? Your son. Oh, Malachi, okay. Yeah, I got him on I got I'm going to send you that clip, man. He walks up with his ball. I'm like, man, get, I got to dribble this nigga ball. This prodigy son. I mean, this tragedy uh, son and shit. This was incredible. I got to send yeah, you that. I got to talk about that. Yeah, that's the guy right there. Whoa. That's uh, my man. That's my little man. I want you to share some um, something about Killer Sun with, with uh, I mean, Killer Sun. You mean Killer Sun? Yeah. Share something That's about Killer Shot with my viewers. Uh, that motherfucker, that motherfucking sativa must be good, nigga. <laughs> Killer Shot, um, rest in peace. That was my brother, still my brother, man. Just my brother, and you know, in passing. But that's my brother. Um, yo, he was one of the few friends I had, aside from like my my physical brother. 
which I happen to be with right now. He was one of the few friends I had that wasn't a blood relative that would give me his honest opinion. Cause that, like, I had a lot of yes motherfuckers around me. That's why I had to, I had to get make tighten my circle and get that shit get from up from around that shit. But Sha was one of the people that I would go to and get an honest opinion. And sometimes I ain't like that shit, but I always respected it. Right. I always right. respected it. And and this is outside of his his physical his his rhyme capabilities and talents. He was nice, and he was just beginning to grow as an artist and I believe get his just due or get his recognition. Unfortunately, his, his untimely demise took him out of the equation for people to really see the talent he really was. But just even outside of that, he was a good friend. A lot of um, bloodshed. A lot of, lot of people lost their lives in Queensbridge and shit like that. Let me. I, I got to just. I, I got to. Uh, I got to point this out. I was looking at one of these. One of these. Uh, one of these gangster Instagram profiles. You know, to post the pictures of the gangsters and legends and shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And through uh, paying attention to one of these pages, I noticed that YG. Killed one of y'all homies, right? I don't. I don't. I, you have to put no. You have to put no name on it. You have to put no name. You have to put no name on it. I just don't. I don't. I, don't, I hear both of them being shouted out on records. Both names. Yeah. Things, things could be confusing. Well, I'm gonna say this, man, and not to uh, you know, that's a that's a real sensitive situation. I'm gonna say that my relationship with YG, the relationship I had with YG was that. You know, YG had no problem backing everything down. He would back everything down. You come around, you you know what I'm saying, and and you know, you he you would you could be microwave food. You was you was fast food. You was an instant plate. You know, my relationship with YG is I grew up with YG. I grew up with YG and his brother. I grew up that they family's family to me. You know what I'm saying? So I never had that issue with him. It was always like he was always like a big brother to me. Even though he was only maybe a couple years older than me, he's a big brother to me. In fact, when I went through Attica on that same bid where I saw Malcolm X's grandson rest in peace and Chi Ali and China Mac, you know what I'm saying? And 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 a couple other dudes, I ain't even gonna mention that. But when I went through Attica, YG, you can't even talk in Attica. YG saw me and was like, yo! Police ain't say nothing to him or nothing. I told him where I was locked at when I got back to my when I got back to that cell. You know what I'm saying? I had cartons of cigarettes, I had two hot pots, I had a TV, and I had three bags of food. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother right there. Unfortunately, when you grow up in a project such as Queensbridge, it's so big, but yet it's so isolated that sometimes friends could become enemies. And in the midst like of war, that. things happen. And in the midst of war, things happen. And that, and unfortunately, that's what happened. I'm not going to take nothing from nobody else. I'm not going to take nothing from nobody else, you know, because, you know, I knew the brother who, who they said, whatever, whatever. But at the same time, I'm not going to say he was a legend. I'm not going to sit here and lie on him. If he was a, if he was breathing, I would, I, would, I would tell him the same thing. Like, he wasn't necessarily a legend. It's just that when people... You know, get to the point where they start shouting dudes out in records. They give them a certain infamy, and they grow into and they grow into self-appointed legends, so to speak. There's a difference between being self-appointed and being anointed. Right, without a doubt. Yo. Okay, looks like we had some uh, difficulties and shit, but uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like I was saying, it's a difference between being self-appointed and anointed. And again, not to take nothing from the brother that passed or, you know what I'm saying, whatever, man, because I ain't going to do that. That was my bro, too. My little bro. He's a little bro. He came up under, under, under after my era. YG is before my era. Whatever situations went down, I don't really know the details on it. I just know, you know, it is what it is, man. I discovered that... Um Actually, it was like a, re a reoccurring incident. I was I was looking at pictures, and then I read comments. Yeah. And on a lot of those pages, with those gangsters pages, a lot of them never yeah. hit each other and shit. Yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the sad thing about, you know, and again, when I say, when I refer to people like YG or, you know, certain individuals from that I knew from a certain specific time or era, 
I don't even refer to them necessarily as gangsters, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them were just, you know, like I said, that infamy is a motherfucker when people put the gangster category or title on you. A lot of a lot of a lot of individuals wouldn't consider themselves gangsters, especially some of the ones I knew who were who were intelligent. When you're intelligent, you you know what a gangster is. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And you know, a lot of them dudes wasn't necessarily gangsters, you know what I mean? But you know how the game go, like like niggas will put an intelligent hoodlum on me, niggas will put gangster on you, and niggas will run with that. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Without a doubt. Let me um ask you to I'm just gonna say mob deep and I'm just gonna let you run with it because it, from 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 my perception from looking at the documentary, that was like a um they was basically your off screen. Yeah, you can say you can you can say that to a degree. Yeah. I can say that. I can say that. I'm a journalist. I can say that, and I'm just calling it how I see. It. And based on what you know, had had you the had on your documentary. Yeah. yeah. The my yeah. deep sound. Um, you the father of that. I, I don't. I don't think the general public a lot of time acknowledges you as the father of CNN, and as the father of the mob deep. You know, situation. You came before them. Um, you the one that went to prison and and, and discovered the uh, the dictators, the 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 the, the, um, the militants, and you the one that came with the flavor about the we gonna change this to Iraq and these are the gangsters, uh, the Ayatollahs and all of yeah. these different guys. From I mean, I mean, I mean more so than anything. Like, and again, I'm not glorifying my trips to prison and anybody who's been through prison. You know, we, we, we know better than to glorify that shit. That shit ain't about nothing. It just so happens some of us were fortunate enough to be what and who we say we are to be able to go through those type of trials and tribulations and come out pretty much intact. So I'm not glorifying that. It's just it's just so happens that, you know, part of what adds to my story, for lack of a better term, or part of what adds to my makeup is the fact that I've been through situations like that. And those who've been through it can relate. When it comes to like, you know, um the the, the you know, like Mob Deep and all of that and me and all of that, me personally where I'm at right now, like, you know, no no offense to nobody, like I don't even try to keep retreading that shit because like I know with this with this entertainment game, with this business, with this with this facade that goes on with people who like carry on with personas and facades, I don't get caught up in that man. Like I don't even deal with that. I don't even be around that type of shit unless I'm working and then I deal with it on a specific level. Me, tragedy, the artist, the fucking man, the person, I try to keep certain things separate. You know what I'm saying? If the people see, all you got to do is look at my history and look at certain individuals' history. I don't have to say shit. The work speaks. I come from an era where the work speaks for you. You ain't got to talk too much. But we're in an era in time now where, you know, the best, who t it ain't who tell the truth, it's who tell the best story. So, you know, y'all read between the lines on that one. Tell me about um, you having to, um, you know, package the CNN situation. Oh, man. At the time, it was a beautiful time. You had a lot of, you had, like, different, different like, forces coming. You know, I mean, they wasn't coming. They was there. Their presence was there. You had Bad Boy. You had Wu-Tang. I mean, you know, like, shit. Even at that time, you had, like, fucking, man, it was crazy. Like, you had the best of the best movements being sparked at that time right, and right. and for me to for me to come with CNN, yeah, that. you all right over there <laughs> yeah i'm straight see i see why you're doing your interviews like this you don't like sharing that good old that good motherfucking weed you got over there man yeah i got it i got it i got it i got it i got it, I got it hitting to the face man because I, you got I, it hitting to the face consistent factual yeah. factual factual such as myself but like i was saying like I, I knew at that time that not just for the sake of coming with something different, I wanted to come with something I was passionate about. I didn't want to come with something that I felt like I had to fit in. And it's times me and Nori talked about in the past, like what kind of set things apart from 
what we were doing in terms of what everybody else was doing is that we didn't try to mesh in with the world. And I definitely didn't want to set out on that direction. I'd rather the world bring the world into my world. And the only way to bring the world into your world is to open the door. So that's all I did. I said, you know what? I'm going to open the door for the world to come in here and see what this what this realm is about, what this level to is Iraq. about. To not Iraq. necessarily Iraq. Iraq. Not necessarily Iraq, but more so the Queensbridge. Iraq, to me, at that time, is a byproduct of Queensbridge. And so okay, Iraq okay. is a byproduct of Kuwait. I'm just, you know, that's just the facts, especially musically. Not taking nothing from Iraq in terms of the street level and all that, but musically, it was about Queensbridge, and Iraq became a byproduct of Queensbridge. Nori and Nori and Nori and and more more or less Akinelli put Left Rack on the map, and then you know, of course, by us making it third world, Nori, you know, implemented the Iraq on the Left Rack, but Left Rack really, you know, it really didn't have a presence like that. And it definitely didn't have a presence when you try to equate it to Queensbridge. And that's just the facts. I don't yeah, fuck with nobody yeah. say. One of my uh viewers, look, we're gonna take a question real quick. One of my one of our viewers, he says, uh, what did you think about half a mil? You know I wanna know about this too. Oh yo, yeah, now nah, I love half a mil. Half a mil was nice. I don't Yo, man, like one thing about me, man, I don't like to speak on things that I don't have 100% information on. And the things, some things I do have 100% information on is not, you know, it's not for everybody's ears. Um, Half a mil, I thought he was dope. I thought he, I respected him. I respected his craft. I respected his mind. And, you know, I just was hurt to find out that, you know, he, he passed. You know what I'm saying? Word, yeah, yeah. I was shout out to my, it. shout out to my brother, shout out to my brother, Exact man, because Exact, it's funny, my man Exact, he do a lot of parties and promotions with 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 everybody, basically, um, especially with '90s era artists. Exact was was responsible for like bringing my two five movement and half a mil out to Jersey, and you know, what I'm saying, I, unfortunately, the brothers out in Jersey took the whole two five thing. And ran with it and turned it into some other shit. But Exact was responsible for bringing that there because Exact always kind of kept me and half a mil like in the same vein in, in in terms of his listening pleasures and all that. But once again, man, half a mil, rest in peace. Um, what I what I like, it, unfortunate uh, thing, man. I, I, I was raised a Muslim. It was it was, it was times you know, I was in you know different environments when it would when where uh I was like an alien. My my beliefs. The way my mother looked, the way my mother dressed, yeah, were like aliens. And um, I, I when, once rappers start saying a lot of on records and shit like that, and, and speaking about knowledge itself, yeah, I thought it was dope. And the niggas that I that I grew up with, they thought it was dope too, cause they was like, oh, okay, we get it now. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Me and my brother was talking about that earlier because I come from a similar background, you know, with my my ab my ab being Muslim, obviously, and you know my my family being Muslim, and like my brother, you know, my pops wouldn't let him listen to nothing if it wasn't me or fucking poor righteous teachers. So his like his in, his in, his introduction to hip hop was me and poor righteous teachers, and for me, it's like I took that influence on later. With CNN, because like that's just part that's just part of my culture, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I felt like and 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 I didn't perp I can't sit here and, and lie and say yo I'm gonna bring the balance. It I, it 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 was just like breathing to me because like I am the balance. A lot of niggas, man. Yeah, a lot of niggas stop eating pork. <laughs> a lot of niggas stopped eating pork and started the eating public, pork again. The public and started, and started eating a pork again. Eating pork and a lot of niggas, a lot of niggas that stopped eating pork, as far as pig is talking pork out their fucking mouth right now. <laughs> they need to stop thinking pork. <laughs> Nigga, don't just stop eating pork. They gotta stop thinking pork. I think so, man. <laughs> Therefore, I. <am. laughs> yeah. Factual, yeah. factual. Yeah. Factual, but um, yeah, man, definitely like, definitely like that. That I've been like accredited to bringing that balance, but like I said, it wasn't. I ain't gonna lie, it wasn't a, and it wasn't a, a calculated thought for me. Yo, I'm gonna bridge the streets with knowledge, and nah, I just, I'm just being me. I, unfortunately, you know, fortunately, 
And unfortunately, I had to live in the streets and I got and I became aware when I got knowledge of self and the street part just never fully fucking left. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. A lot of people, you know, y'all wasn't the first to try to deliver the message. It, there was there was there was others. Uh, you know, long before y'all, but the way y'all gave it up, it, it was it, it y'all, y'all, y'all delivered it in a, in a manner that, uh, you know, a street nigga could digest it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I, I, shit, shit, I, shit, I, I just, I just like, right. listen, I want to talk to my people. When I talk to my people, I got to relate to them. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. You know, we relate. We relate to each other. So, I, everybody, they, 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 they was looking forward to this. What's up with you and Esco? Y'all good? Yo, man. Yeah, we good. We good. We good, man. Esco's one of the best lyricists of our time, man. I, I love, I love his, I love his craft. I love his ability, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of him. He's doing his thing. And, you know, I ain't gonna sit here and lie. Like, you know, it was loose, loose, loose. Little clouds, little fogginess back in years ago. Niggas been over that in the nineteen hundreds, man. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And 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 realistically, I can only equate that to like niggas' spirit of competition being so high, man. That's all it like, was for real. That's right? all. Nah, because I never. You know, it's funny. Me and that nigga never really had an issue. Right. It's right. just you know, like niggas. You know, it's like shit. Niggas is warriors, man, on the mic. So it's like. The spirit of competition, niggas will be on there. Yo, all right, listen. All right, I know they're saying, like, that tension is going to be there. Yeah, you know, but now niggas is older. Niggas, <laughs> you know how it go, nigga. Fuck, you know what I mean? It That's was all a lot of y'all. Uh, it was a lot of y'all. He thought he, he was thought that he nigga, too. Rest in peace to him. That's one of my favorites. You, you know, I got the, I got the, I got the mob deep tattoo on one of the back of, yeah, grimy retarded. Yeah. So, oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's hard body. Yeah, that's hard body. No figgy. Yeah, it's like I, a lot I, of my, I love, I love, I love mob deep man. Let's yeah, talk about, yeah. Let's talk about prodigy, my nigga. What's let's up, talk about bro? him. Rest in peace, man. What up? One of my favorites. Tell me, um. About your relationship with him, tell me it, it had to be a competitive thing at some point. Pete thought he was that nigga too. Pete, Pete thought he was better than Hov. So nah, I, mean, I, I, I don't necessarily. Be. I don't necessarily go on what a nigga think about himself. You know what I'm saying? Like that dope. You know, like I said, is it difference between a nigga being self appointed and a nigga being anointed, man? I don't go on what you. He had that rap sheet though. He had that rap sheet though. Yeah, he had that rap sheet. He had that he rap sheet. He was boxing with all of the giants. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're a funny guy. You're a funny guy. You you realize you're talking to a intelligent holder right now, right? No doubt. No doubt. Okay, no doubt. let's get no this shit in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you're a funny guy, man. <laughs> I like you. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, um, did you, you did you grow up with Sherm too? You grew up with Sherm, right? Nah, Sherm grew up under me. When I say under me, like it's not like he was under my wing. He's younger, lot like, younger than you. Matter of fact, it was a time he was under my wing. Okay. And I tried. I actually tried to adopt him when I got my first deal, Intelligent Hoodlum, and I got the budget. I tried to adopt Sherm. Okay. And um, like legally <laughs> adopt him. That's the type of level I'm on. You know what I'm saying? Right, I tried right. to legally adopt him because he reminded me of myself. Like, right, I was right. Sherm back in the days. Like, jumping out my window and sticking everything up. You know, taking cars, crashing them on the hill. Just doing wild shit. You know what I mean? And I rem he reminded me of myself because that's the side people saw. But he had a whole other side of intelligence that people didn't even get, weren't even privy to see. And I caught a glimpse of that. And I tried to take him under the wing. Peace to Sherm. Good luck on your appeal, brother. Um, peace to his mother, Joyce. Um, beautiful lady. Good person. Um, yeah, Joyce and all. Like I, jo she would always be like, yo, please just take him. And I kind of related to Sherm because my physical father was murdered. And Sherm didn't have his physical father. And I could kind of see what he was going through. You know, um, I started, you know, having eventually having my own children. And having baby mamas and things of that nature and going through my own life, trials and tribulations. And, you know, I, he kind of drifted off from me. 
and you know he got caught up in his own things and had to go through his own love hella right and unfortunately that that ended him up with a lot of time and um right. before right. that prior to that were a few altercations and where he put a lot of fear in people you know what i'm saying but to me he's like my little brother he's just like the similar to the brother i got sitting here right here which is my physical little brother sharon was like my little brother I never had these type of issues with dudes in the street like that where I'm from because of my background and who I am and what I represent. Right, so it was right. more or less, they were little brothers to me. Any beef I had in that particular realm was, they were probably wasn't even walking yet. And we already took care of that. Tried you used to be in the tunnel? Of course I was in the tunnel. What kind of question is that? Tell me something about the tunnel. Okay, tell I'll tell you. Listen, listen, right? Now, y'all had a competitive thing amongst each other in, in Queensbridge, you know, Thanks. about music, whatever. But when y'all go to the tunnel, y'all all together, right? Of course. We was like that all the time. We knew, okay. we knew it's strength in numbers. So who in the spot when y'all in, in, in the tunnel? It's me. Uh, it's, it's me. It was basically more or less for a time it would be CNN and the mob. You know what I'm saying? You know, Nas was always, like, kind of isolated doing his own thing. You know what I mean? Nas right, kind of, right. like, always moved on some loner shit. And I kind of was the same, but, like, I, for me, it was more like business. Like, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get out and network for this group. So, you know, when I would go to the tunnel, we'd be deep. It'd be, like, 30 of us. But, you know, I'm the one sliding off going to get a bottle of champagne for Flex and passing it to him at the DJ booth so he could keep playing T.O.N.Y. Right. So you, you know, was, you, you you performed in there too, huh? No. Yeah, I performed in there once. We performed in there once. What it we was performed like, in there, right. right? It was it was crazy. Like you gotta understand, like you got five of the illest boroughs of NYC in one club, and it's not just like you know. Now I see I see it like a lot. It's real. It's 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 segregated now, whereas before it wasn't segregated. You have an ill star nigga in one corner and a notorious stick up kid in the next one. You know what I'm saying? I heard them stick up boys up in there. Oh, oh yeah, it was def the predators were fucking out. You know what I'm saying? And I never right. got robbed in there ever. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh man, that's crazy. Would would Mega would Mega and Nature and everybody be with y'all too? Um, we didn't really move like that, like. We might end up in the same spot, but it wasn't like niggas got each other, got on them, everybody got on the phone and was like, all right, meet on the 40th, meet on the 40th, meet in front of Wong's. We're going to go get gas and jump over the 59th Street Bridge and then go through Midtown and jump on the FD and then hit the tunnel. It wasn't like that. We saw each other. We saw each other. We know we got a bond. You know, we got a, we get, the hood is our bond. Nigga, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What's good? Everything gracious? Yeah, everything. Ooh, all right, we in the building. Yeah, we in the building. You know what it is, and that's that. Who your favorite MCs out of the uh, Queensbridge? Do you got? Do you have a top five? Um, a top have five. Have you ever been asked this before? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I would have to say Nas. Um, Nature. Two. Capone. Three. Damn! Hold on, you put me in a tight spot. Cause Nas, Nature, Capone. Poet. Poet was the same ball, right? Ball, right? Yeah, but damn, son, because now you got a new wave of niggas that's like L2, but it's like, I can't, yeah, I know. Uh, Shooter, Piff, like you so got a yeah, chef. Yeah. It's like a, now, nah, but it's like a new QB wave that I can't necessarily put with the QB wave of not yesterday, but of the golden era. Oh, yeah. I know yeah, Chef Live. I met him. Yeah. Yeah, he's nice. Fucking King Shooter's nice. Piff is nice. Yo, like, and I can't, yeah, I can't put them, I can't put them. My son Malachi's nice. I can't put them in the same vein of, of, of like the natures, Nazis, and Havocs. I'm not gonna say Prodigy. Respect the Prodigy. Rest in peace. He's not from Queensbridge. I'm not even gonna say Mega because Mega's not really from Queensbridge. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? We, we, I, I, I ended up finding out, you know, about that, about you know where they were from and all of that originally. Yeah. To the no, consumer, respect, to respect, us, respect to, to all us, of them. But I, I, yeah. I, I, you have to, you have to understand this from a consumer. We're passionate about this shit. We don't yeah, care about, about 
where the nigga who was born at. We don't care about that. No, but when I so, say, so, but when you, so, no, no, uh, but, but hold on, wait, wait. Mega, when you ask, but hold on, when you ask, Rizzi, when you ask, Dan when you Queens ask, Ridge, Dan no, the Queensbridge car. car. No, no, I can't necessarily say that. I'm not going to, we're wow. not going to, I'm not, right. I'm not gonna get a headache over it. Like that, I'm not going to get, it was packaged that way, but I'm not going to get in the headache over it. For me, like, like I was telling my brother earlier, when I rate, an MC, I have a different standard of how I rate them. When I rate a Queensbridge artist or Queensbridge MC, I'm going to rate them on a certain standard. One, you got to be from the bridge. That's so it. you talking about birthright. All right. I, 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 exactly. I was there. exactly. You, you, you was born there too, right? You was born exactly. there. No, I wasn't born there. So how can you, how can you, how can you uphold that type of standard if you're not, a, if you're not an originally a native of Queensbridge? Because, because I was born I came to Queensbridge when I was five, and from that point on, I fought for Queensbridge hip hop. I rep Queensbridge hip hop. That's how I can hold that. Okay. Well, yeah, you was in the Juice Crew and all that. Too. That's how I can hold that. You can't. We, we, we gonna give you an asterisk. Forever. You got an asterisk. We gonna put an asterisk next, next to your name. Listen, you know, you, you know, you know, juice, you was in the Juice Crew. You a, you a pioneer. I can't, I can't argue. With, really, I can't. I can't. I'm just, I'm just saying though, just realistically, I'm just saying, not even on no, just, you know, I know this is Gully TV, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is Gully TV and this is Mahdi, this is Chaji Gaddafi. Like, Word. I was raised in Queensbridge and I'm not, not just because I went out there and I had a cousin out there and I started selling crack out there because my cousin lived out there or I started hanging on the block or, or I shot a nigga or I shot myself out there, you know what I'm saying? I, I I was raised in Queensbridge and I rep Queensbridge. I fought for Queensbridge. It's a major difference. I put my life on the line for Queensbridge. It's a major difference. But that's young me. You know what I'm saying? Now me, not even old me, now me. Now me is like I did that already. It's cool. I don't regret doing it. If I could go back, I'd do it again. No doubt. And, I, and, if, and if I go back and take what I said away, what I just said, I'd say it again. What was your um, What was your views? You know, you know, I was the one that covered the whole situation when Prodigy's mural got the things. Uh, what was your views um, on? You know, initially, I'm gonna, honest, I'm gonna be honest. Initially, initially, I'm gonna be honest. I was gonna go and film and be like, "Yo, why niggas do that?" But right, then when right. I found out the reasoning why, right, you right. know, I had to. I had to understand that, yo. Yeah, I, I understand, too. I understand. I understand. And, it, and, it, and, it, and I, I, I'm keeping it green because, like, I had to understand that, yo. And it, and it made sense in terms of the morale of what that was about. Pardon me, what was the why? Not now. All right. That's... All right, pardon so me. So as of, as, as, of, as of now, there's no... Um, Mule erected of, of Prodigy in Queensbridge? Um, <laughs> you there? Yeah. Say that again? As of now, currently, there's no murals of, of Prodigy in Queensbridge? No. Not at all, no. Do you, do you know that they got uh, murals of Prodigy in fucking Poland and Russia and shit like that? <laughs> As 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 they should, as they should, uh, and I'm not gonna say it shouldn't be a, a prodigy mural. It shouldn't ex a prodigy mural shouldn't exist in Queens. Maybe it shouldn't exist in Queens. Maybe it should be a. You know what I mean? Because Queens, you it's, blacked out. Maybe, maybe you said what? I said I'm not gonna say it shouldn't be a prodigy mural in Queens. Prodigy definitely rep Queens, man. You know, lyrically. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, but in terms of Queensbridge, it is it takes on a more personal relation and it takes on a more personal connection when Queensbridge doesn't feel the relationship to Prodigy. Project politics. It's, and, it's, and, there's, and there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, you know, and with respect to Twin, I love Twin. You know, I know Twin. I knew his pops. I knew his mom's. And you know, and, and and this is not me shitting on Prodigy, because if I wanted to do that, I would do it while he was alive. 
I'm not going to wait till a man passes and do that, and nor am I going to say anything disparaging or devaluing against his name and character. It's not about that. It's just about right. being real about it, man. Like, come on. Like, why Why we got to play these games? I'm not going to go through all of that. When y'all used to be in the tunnel with E-Money Bags, be with y'all too? He wasn't necessarily be be with me. <laughs> but you know he would he would be with I'm just keeping it Greenberry. He I'm just telling the truth. He would be with like P sometime or be obviously he wasn't with P when certain situations happened. You know, because he might have been able to at least calm it down. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. But but nah, I, I wasn't with him. You know, moving in a flock like that. I don't move like that. Right. <laughs> I seen your interview with Forbes DVD when uh, I know you uh, did. That's why you said that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Funny ass. <laughs> I'm not stupid, nigga. <laughs> what was up with the song, though? Explain what was up with the song. I mean, song. I mean, brother, brother, listen, man. Like, I'm, I'm a businessman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's not my, it's not my. Like, I had no idea. No idea E Money Bags was gonna become this infamous, you know, gangster persona to the world. And, you know, I just knew the dude put a verse on my track and it was whack. <laughs> right. right. And and was was I on my toes when I ran into him in now session? You yeah. motherfucking right. <laughs> the nigga's a shooter. He's an assassin. <laughs> I'm on my toes. How did, did, I, uh, did, I, did, I, did I? Hold on, wait. Did I run out the next? Did I run out the back door? No, I did not. No. no did I lie? Did I lie when a nigga asked me why did I take him off the track? No, I did not. Right. Littles was in the room. Tahim was in the room. Nas was in the room. Did I lie? No, I did not. Rafik was in the room. Bag said, "Yo, why you take me off the track?" There was a slight pause. I looked at the two niggas on his side. These niggas look like these niggas look like little jail midgets. I knew they were shooters. There's no way in the world these niggas was his kids. And he's <laughs> and, and he's walking. First of all, Bags wasn't the shortest. Bags wasn't the tallest man in the world. Rest in peace, Bags. <laughs> These niggas was these niggas was half bag size. <laughs> so I knew with these little niggas. I knew what they fucking purpose was. <laughs> so there was a slight second pause. Just a fucking second. And I looked at both of them. Look. One, two. And I said, it is what it is. I said, because your verse was whack. <laughs> he outstretched his hand. And that was that. Right. It was concerned. Was, was I, what, did I feel a sense of relief? Right. It had to yes. Happen. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm just keeping it green. Am I a pussy? No. Nah. Did I feel a sense of relief? Yes. You got a quote that I, I like. Fuck? You say, uh, just real recognize real from 20 blocks away, my nigga. Yeah. Actually, that, actually, I, actually, listen. That's, that's, that's my man Milk Murder's quote. Right? And yeah, I just run it, run, it, run it by the audience right quick. And I, Milk Murder said, and I ain't got a whole lot to say. And why is that? Real recognized, real 20 blocks away. So I just reiterated it. These are the type of individuals I did run with and, you know, official individuals. Right. right. You know? And sometimes, you know, you find, the most official will find themselves like bags in, in, in some unofficial situations, man. And this is why now it's about you know, it's about us really, really, really capitalizing on the value that we bring to this fucking culture instead of letting our value be devalued and exploited by everything else outside of our fucking selves. Right. So I ain't here to be beefing and trying to fucking create no smoke with niggas and all that. I'm not for that, man. The resume speak for itself. I'm not pussy. In fact, I'm, you know, I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a man's man. Can you recall your, your first time meeting or encountering him? Was he nah, man. Meeting? Nah, nah, nah. We're going to ask you some questions now. Go ahead. Let's get it. Now, when we first met, brother, we first started talking, you had something come across your page, and I was like, hmm. You know what? 
Guess what? I ain't gonna do that right now. I'm gonna save that for my show, Drive Boss. Look, by the way, too, I want to have me on the show, man. Make nah, you, I, I, I gotta get you on the show, but you know what? I was gonna ask that question, but you know what? You're a journalist, you got a good platform, and I need to give you the forum you deserve with a whole interview. So everybody that's looking at this interview right now, you see me keeping it green with Gully TV because I want the same thing back. Talk to me, I that's talk that. back. Because I'm going to give, give Gully TV a good interview as well because he yeah, asked yeah, me some yeah. questions and I could tell he did his fucking homework. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I grew up in this music shit, my nigga. No doubt, no doubt. That, uh, that song... Um, when you, you say, I, I, I guess funky like a monkey that ain't washed in years. You remember? Oh, you know, come on, right. nigga. I hey, just get, nigga, don't pull out my baby pictures, nigga. Hey, man, I do this shit. I'm the best at this. You pull out my baby pictures, nigga. Look, I, that's my that's shit. My, my man shit. used to play that shit all the fucking time. Did Mary J. Blige use that, that track, too? Yo, you know what's funny? Mary J. Blige used it with Smith & Wesson later. Um... Yo, man, I could go into some shit right now, man. Like, I could go into some shit, right? And this is going to sound crazy to people. Like, I don't want people to think, like, oh, this nigga got all oh, he was there for everything. I'm just kicking the facts. I remember going to somebody's house in Ingle. Now, look this up after I tell you. Oh, you fucking, you fucking, fucking internet fucking Magnum PI niggas. Look, <laughs> look this up. Me, not you. I'm talking about, you know, because niggas be like, yo, I'm looking up too. Yeah, you supposed to, but I'm not directing All right, the let's go. Yeah, but listen, what I'm saying is like, I remember going to Inglewood Cliffs. It's an area in New Jersey. A particular individual lived there. His name was Andre Harrell. He was the president of Uptown MCA. Now, the reason why I was going there is because if you look at the production, some of the production credits of one of his artists who passed away named Dwight, who is Heavy D, okay. Molly was producing him. Okay. I happened to be at Molly's crib in Spring Valley, and we went over to Englewood Cliffs in New Jersey to Andre's, uh, at that time, and that time, that shit looked like a fucking illustrious mansion to me. Now it's a cool crib. But that right, shit look right. like I can imagine at that time coming out the projects. And I had my cousin with me, and his name is Rafik. I call him Sheikh Amir. Me and okay, Rafik, okay. me and Rafik went with Marley to Andre Harrell's crib. And my cousin Rafik, my cousin Rafik, me and Rafik was talking about how we wanted to start like putting hip hop beats. Like, we heard on the blends, like, Grandmaster Vic and, you know what I'm saying, motherfucking uh, uh, Ron G and motherfucking, uh, right. and, and, and we wanted to put more, somebody need to make an album with the hip-hop beats under the shit, with break beats under the shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I and I ain't gonna lie, Puff was right there while we was building on that shit. Okay. And that seemed to be that nigga's formula later. That's a fact. I'm not lying. That's a fact. And then after me and Molly did that shit, Mary came out with that joint. And niggas used that joint or whatever. But that's a fact. Niggas was in the room when we was talking about that. And it seemed like to me niggas just ran with it. I'm not mad at it. I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. you know, that's a fact, though. Yeah, that, that joint, you was killing that shit. I write raps. Precious like artifacts. Yeah, Kill yeah. that that's shit. Legit. That was some How shit. How old was you when that was out? Uh, I had to be like 19, 20. Damn. Maybe, maybe yeah, like 19, 20. So, so you was real young when you was an intelligent hoodlum, then. When I was intelligent hoodlum, I was about 18. Yeah, I just came home. I was 18. Yeah. But tragedy is like way before that. You know what I'm saying? What was your relationship like with Raekwon? That's one of my... I got a new thing. Uh... Tattoo on my arm. And you, shit. you got Wu Tang. Hold on, hold on. Somebody just hit me and said, "Trash." Remember, you came up to Marley Crib and played us New York, New York with y'all going at Pac, and the West Coast shit was intense at that time. Y'all niggas was the only niggas to step up to the plate. When you you in the West Coast right now? Yeah. How'd you feel about that record? Shit, I was on your side, nigga. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> so, but how'd you, how'd you, not, not necessarily a shot, but how did you feel about it? Like, man, who was your... shit, y'all was killing that shit, man. I, um, at the time, um, uh, the guy, uh, it was a guy around me that was playing that shit, and he didn't know who it was. He had just got the record. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it, it was vinyl back then or whatever still. And, um, I think it was, it was a remix of something that was kind of dope. But anyway, when they played the joint, man, I'm like, yo, uh, 25 to life and shit. I'm like, that sound like fucking, you know, that sound like my people, you know, Queensbridge and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The Queensbridge sound and shit. And, um, not, not until a little later did I do my research and find out who, you know, exactly 25 to life was, but. Yeah, that yeah. was I was on y'all side one hundred percent. I lived through that shit. Um, my my neighborhood. I used to be on the block, man, arguing with like thirty niggas and shit. I'm from the era when we were still on the block selling rocks, my nigga. Like thirty, no 30 niggas on the block. Everybody's got you know, soon as the got CDs, that. Soon as the CDs would come out, soon as pot come out, we hit them up. Niggas running around on the block with the CD talking crazy and shit like that. So. Yeah. I'm, arguing a bu- a, I'm arguing with a bunch of niggas that was, you know, they was pro Tupac. And, um, I just, I, 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 I the shit that my Deep was talking about, being on the run and shit like that from your PO and shit like that, that shit was a, for some reason, that shit was a very, very extreme problem at that age. That adolescent age and shit like that. Their relationship with them probation officers, that shit was intense, my nigga. Like, shit. Man, man, I'm, I'm no, you just let me up one time, my nigga. Like, yo. He said the relationship was intense. This, 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 this funny dude, man. Yo, man. They had me on this yo, fucking that program, shit is, right? That shit is still intense, nigga. I had no, I had no <laughs> discipline. I had yeah. no discipline. I had no yeah. discipline whatsoever. I'm addicted to weed. I'm smoking weed all crap. Every time I go down to this fucking probation officer, man, this nigga warning me. He warning me. Look, he gonna lock me up, man. I'm in my young mind. I'm like, man, I ain't committed no crimes. They can't put me in jail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, I went through rehab. I, I, I went through rehab and everything, man. Behind that, you know that fucking probation. You know how they put you through the through the fucking spin cycle, man. They're like. <laughs> When you're young, you don't have no discipline. You're not making them appointments on time. None of that shit, man. You're going to I used to stay on the run. You're going to run in a heartbeat. <laughs> That's that shit my <laughs> Deep was rapping about. That shit, Killer Black being on the run. We all was on the fucking run, my nigga. <laughs> Straight up. Black wasn't the only nigga. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I be knowing. Trust me. Yo, but listen, bro. I got to get up in this session, man. All right, man. I appreciate your time, man. Nah, you got it. You got it. Listen, Listen, man. You you got to tell me something about the chef before we leave, though, man. Raekwon, Raekwon, one time for me, please. Yo, um, the chef, man. Chef, I met Raekwon. A nigga snatched the mic out my hand. (laughs) Where's the mother? I forgot about that. I did. He snatched the fucking mic out my hand in the Palladium, and it's like we were so deep. And let me tell you something. When he did it, I was shocked. Yeah. I'm saying, he, 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 he went at Biggie, too. Like, he, he didn't have no picks. Nah, he didn't have no picks. Nah, but he did it so quick, it was shocking to me. I was like, I was froze. Right. Not right. out of fear, just out of the fact that, oh, shit. I would have did the same shit. And it's like, from there, I liked him. Without a doubt. From there, I liked him. Secretly. <laughs> okay? <laughs> On the outside, I was tight. Cause you know I had to be, but inside I was like, "Yo, man, right? That. I'm like that. Somebody got me. I was like, damn, I'm this nigga got chef, me, man. Like this nigga I'm got me, fucking chef. Yo, P, I love Raekwon. Like over the years, man, we developed a great relationship. Love him, solid dude. Always come through for me. Matter of fact, I got a joint with him produced by Scram Jones that I'm gonna put out on my new album, my new solo album. It's fire. Shit is crazy. Peace to Chef. Salam alaikum, Chef. What's good, man? How you doing, man? But um, yo, Gully, we can finish this up tomorrow. I gotta go. Appreciate I gotta get. Time, I, my I, nigga. I, yeah, same it's here. Great, I gotta get in here and pay some bills. I'm gonna line something up so I can interview you. If you want to yeah, do a part yeah. two, you know how we talk. I'm in. 
I'm here for you anytime you need me, brother. Appreciate you. Go ahead, uh, drop out for me before you leave and shit, my nigga. What you need? What you need? Go ahead, go ahead, give him a drop as you. Leave. Hey, yo, this tragedy, Gaddafi. You know what I'm saying? Once the foul Mahdi, and now I'm just a nice guy. Yo, you check ain't it foul out. No more. Nah, I'm still foul. Yo, I'm but listen, I'm, I'm I'm still man. foul. I'm super foul now. I'm super foul now. I'm right. super foul. But um, I appreciate, I'm, you. I appreciate, I appreciate you, you too. We doing this live for Gully TV. We gonna get back to it. Man. Man, I gotta man. get up here and get some money. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Drive Boss. You know what I'm saying? Drive Boss with Christ Castro. Shout out Karan Goodman. Shout out Third Degree. Well, third Degree Burns. Uh, I can't see everybody. A nigga glasses is fucked up. The real, the real Rostick. You know what I'm saying? Casper Devon Bay. Shout out to everybody that logged in, man. I appreciate all of y'all. Bob, Bobby Avlard. We ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna do that. Hold on. Lamel Turner. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all y'all, man. I wish I could get, yo, I gotta get back in here. I gotta work. I'm already late for my session, man. Peace. <laughs> Oh my, I'm on a win streak. This is incredible. All praise due to Allah. I appreciate everybody who tuning in tonight.